has Christianity ever touched down in Yemen? Like, has anybody ever tried to spread it to Yemen? Of course. Christianity has spread had spread all over the then known world. Historically, mm. even before the time of Muhammad, you'll find the church had spread throughout the then known world. In fact, the Islamic sources confirm that. Muhammad himself confirmed that. Or at least there are sayings attributed to Muhammad that confirm that, such as Sirat Rasulullah. In Sirat Rasulullah, Muhammad is reported to have said that some of Jesus' own disciples preached to the Arabs, went to the Hijaz, even went mm. to the Hijaz and preached the gospel to the Arabs. Yeah. For the benefit of everyone else, one of the first, if not the first, Muslim scholar who tried to write a biography on the life of Muhammad was a Muslim named Ibn Ishaq. Now, according to the Muslim sources, this biography called Sirah, Sirah means a life trodden out, Sirat Rasulullah, the life of the Messenger of Allah, mm. was written around 750 AD. Now, here's the problem. We don't have any copies of what Ibn Ishaq wrote. What we have is a man, a Muslim man that came about 100 years later, around 830 AD, 830 AD, 9th century. And he took the copies of Ibn Ishaq and he expunged, he removed material from Ibn Ishaq's sirah that he didn't like, that he thought reflected poorly on Muhammad or based mm. on weak traditions. So he edited it, expurgated it, and all the copies we have are from Ibn Hisham's editorial rewriting of Ibn Ishaq. Now let me go to the citation itself. In page 653, Muhammad confirmed, or at least there's a tradition attributed to Muhammad, where Muhammad confirmed that Jesus' own disciples spread out through the entire then known world, even mm. preaching the gospel in Arabia, in Arabia, the Hijaz. Let me read God has sent me, Muhammad, to all men. Do not hang back from me as the disciples hung back from Jesus, son of Mary. For you Christians, it's gold because this refutes the Muslim claim that the Arabs did not have revelation given to them, nor did they have a scripture because according to Muhammad, Jesus' disciples reached them with the revelation of Jesus Christ. Do Man, so his disciples, Jesus' disciples was actually there and teaching. So that means early early on islam which is still centuries after is actually stating like no nah, what they had was given to us so again if what they had was given to them that got to mean what they have was true because they were told to confirm so even a couple hundred years after these other writers from muhammad are confirming what they had a couple centuries before so even up to 200 plus years after the Quran stating that you need to rely on the Torah and then Jew, they had what they needed. And what's crazy is even at the time of Muhammad, we got what they had dated earlier. So we definitely have what they had in the 800s. So what is really going on? The Muslim belief of, nah, it's been corrupted, but yet can't never show no corruption. The book don't say it's corrupted and you can't prove it's been corrupted. What's going on? What they like to say is corruption is nonsense. What they like to say is corruption is, oh man, some dates being changed. Or, oh man, some scribal errors here. Never not has the theology ever been changed. Never not in any of the manuscripts that we have. Sure, ages change, whatever, but not who God is. Not who was always taught from the Old Testament to the New Testament. So what's really going on, Muslim folk? Why can't y'all just understand that the truth of the matter is, no matter how much it's ingrained in you, how much it's taught, how much you've been lied to, your book affirms our book. Our book says your book is nonsense. That's the truth of the matter. Let's keep going, Sam. Man, Sam, ah, he always got the info, man, the, the real info. And people just hate him so much because he's just laying down the facts that they can't refute. Do not hang back from me as the disciples hung back from Jesus, son of Mary. They asked how they hung back, and he said, he called them. Muhammad is saying that Jesus called his disciples to a task similar to that which I've called you. Those who had to go to a short journey were pleased and accepted. They accepted mm. that mission easily. Those who had a long journey before them were displeased and refused to go. And Jesus complained to them to God. Tabari. Now this part comes from Tabari. Tabari. From that very night, and now the rest of it comes from Ibn Hisham. Every one of them, every one of Jesus' disciples, this is Muhammad supposedly saying this, every one of them was able to speak the language of the people to whom he was sent. Guys, mm. did you catch it? Muhammad just confirmed the story of Pentecost. Because in Acts mm. chapter 2, the Holy Spirit miraculously filled the apostles of Jesus 
to speak in all the dialects of all the people, all the Jews that had attended Pentecost in the temple, all the Jews from every place, from every place under heaven. And in fact, if you go to Acts chapter 2 and you read verses 1 to 13, it says there were Jews from Arabia, Jews from Africa. So even Acts 2 confirms all the Jews from all over the then known world, including Arabia, were there at Pentecost to witness mm -hmm. the apostles filled with the Holy Spirit to speak miraculously in their dialects perfectly and heard the gospel, got saved, and then took that gospel back to their people. Acts 2 verses 1 to 13. And who confirms this? Muhammad. Mm. Every one of them was able to speak the language of the people to whom he was sent. Tabari. Now, this is the part from Tabari where he's quoting Ibn Ishaq. Jesus said, this is a thing that God has determined that you should do, so go. Now, guys, and my brother in humanity, pay attention to this. Those whom Jesus, son of Mary, sent, both disciples and those who came after them, mm. in the land were Peter, the disciple, and Paul with him. Paul traveled with Peter. Paul belonged to the followers. He was a tabi. He wasn't a sahabi, meaning he wasn't a follower of Jesus when Jesus was on earth, which is true to historical fact. Mm -hmm. Paul did not follow Jesus when he's on earth. After Jesus went to heaven and appeared to him, he started following the apostles. So this source is spot on, accurate. Paul belonged to the followers and was not a disciple. And so Peter and Paul went to Rome. Andrew and Matthew to the land of the cannibals. Thomas to the land of Babel, that's Iraq, my people, which is in the land of the east. Philip to Carthage, which is Africa. John to Ephesus, the city of the young men of the cave. James to Jerusalem, which is Alia, the city of the sanctuary. Now watch this. Bartholomew to Arabia, which is the land of Hejaz. Simon mm. to the land of the Berbers. Judah, who was not one of the disciples, was put in the place of Judas. There you go. But I'm confused. I thought the Arabs did not have any revelation given to them. Yeah, any and so their own sources, their own early scholars are stating what y'all today deny. Y'all deny the fact that these particular people that were followers of Christ, that wrote the actual scriptures, that we actually have church history to show that they wrote these scriptures and, uh, you know, affirm that. Uh, y'all try to say, like, nope, none of it happened. Mm -mm, it's not true. And then most of you guys love to hate on Paul, love to hate on Paul. But yet the early sources that y'all got is saying like, yep, yeah, nope, this is what Paul did. This is how Jesus's people went to go head on and teach. Man, boy, I tell you what, Sam be bringing the sources, y'all. I actually need to get that book. Hopefully, hopefully I'm able to get that book and look at that because that sounds pretty cool. So I'm going to remember what he said at the beginning. Google search that bad boy, get that PDF. You feel me? By the way, if you made it up to this point, let me know what's your favorite Nintendo 64 game. If you're old enough anyway, a lot of you young cats don't even know. Don't even know. I'm going to let y'all know right now that James Bond Goldeneye, classic. Most people, I know y'all what y'all going to say. Y'all going to say, oh man, Mario Kart. Ah, that Goldeneye, man, if you was cold with it, you was cold with it. And you know, not saying that Mario Kart wasn't great. It was, but golden eye for me so let me know down below so it also lets me know if you made it up to this point you know what i'm saying and if you did make it to this point and you do want to answer the question and you rock with your boy and you rock with sam might as well like and subscribe you know what i'm saying if you're not following me already you might as well all i do is bring scriptures is bring people that know scriptures talk about the scriptures talk about the truth and share it with people who may not have seen it that's what i do that's what i love to do so speaking of if you do follow me and you want to Go ahead, hit that notification bell so you can see anytime I drop. I drop about four times a week. You might as well get it notified. You know what I'm saying? Why not? But let's get back to it. Sam's cooking. The other thing about the Trinity, deity of Christ, scripture, I'm surprised because it's like none of these questions hit I've at the core doctrine. I don't put a limitation on God. I've accepted Good. the Trinity. I've accepted Good. the Trinity. Good, I don't man. Like, I don't limit God. Excellent. Uh, Excellent. Historically, go to the early church. Some of the greatest Christian theologians and martyrs mm -hmm. were African because they were from Alexandria, Egypt. Athanasius, the champion of the Trinity. He's from Alexandria, Egypt. Alexander, his bishop. He's from Alexandria, you know, Alexandria, Egypt, right? Even Augustine is from Africa, right? And the Cappadocians, Cappadocians they, no, no, Cappadocia, that's in Turkey, is it not? Like I said, I'm not the best at geography. But many of the greatest church scholars, theologians, and holy martyrs were Africans. So when they tell you Christianity is the religion of the white man, they don't know their history. <laughs> Tertullian, Tertullian was African. Origin was African. So some of the greatest Christian theologians, scholars, greatest Christian theologians, scholars 
We're Africans. Mm. So keep studying, brother. And if you have no questions, keep studying, keep reading, keep praying. You're on a good path. And it blessed my heart to hear what you said. I don't put limitations on God anymore, and I've accepted the Trinity as true. Amen. Amen. You're you're there. You're close. And may the Lord Jesus bring you fully into the kingdom. And I pray that for all of us. So if you have any more questions, feel free. If not, then just enjoy the show as we talk about other issues. Okay, mm. cool. Bet. Thank you. Anytime, man. And feel free to contact me if you have more questions. I'm here. For sure. I got you. All right, buddy. Lord be with you. And pray for him. Pray for his journey. That's beautiful. With Sam Shamoon breaking down some Islamic sources and then eventually talking with his brother and thank God this brother he's been working with has come to get a better understanding of who, who the true God is and it's not the God of Islam, it's not the God of the JWs or anybody else like that. It's the triune God, the true God, the only one that makes sense historically, logically, and however else you want to talk about it, you know what I'm saying? So thank God for Sam Shamoon and he was able to walk his brother through that. We need to pray for this brother on his journey. I don't necessarily know exactly when this was recorded. This could be a video from a year ago, two years ago. It could be a video that just happened recently. But either way, we should always still pray for the people that are coming to know the truth so that they can continue on the journey. And with that being said, pray for me, hopefully, because I'm still on this journey as well. And I like to get more knowledge. And also, ain't nothing wrong with people praying for you. I need prayers. Trust and believe I need prayers because I'll be messed up at times. I'll be talking to people crazy, all this other stuff. So I need prayers. And Lord willing, as you guys pray for me, I do my best to send a prayer for you. Especially if you put it in the comments. Like say, hey, Albert, would you pray for me? What? Too easy. Of course I will. That being said, this has been your boy Scripture Plug, Albert. I'll catch you all next time. I'm out.